Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to a Godot shader tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be making a chromatic aberration shader. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it, but I think that's right. And uh, this is the effect that we'll get right here. Your shader will have some different parameters, like the amount, where you can lower the amount, or you can just disable it altogether. You can see the slight difference there. Uh, we can make it more exaggerated like that. It will also take an offset texture where white is a maximum offset and darker values are less and less offset. So you can see this texture right here is white around the edges and darker in the center. It means that the center of the image will have less of an offset while the edges will have more of an offset. Um, but we could also use something like this as a texture um, to get kind of like a glitch effect. This is just a big scribbly texture. Um, you can see that's what it looks like. So let's get started. Let me open up Godot here and I'm going to create a new project. Let's browse, we'll do it in here. We'll call it chromatic aberration and create create and edit okay uh, we'll come into our project here we'll drag our default Godot icon over and on this icon we'll come over into materials we'll create a new shader material and um, then we'll double click on that and we'll do a new shader. And when we open up the new shader, it should bring up some shader code here. In Godot, you need to, um, they've changed how shaders work from, to, from Godot 2 to Godot 3. The new system is a little bit more flexible, I feel like, but it's still pretty easy to learn. So you first need to define a shader type we're going to define a canvas item. This is the basic shader type for um, performing uh, stuff on a 2D, like an image like this. Uh, then we're going to need a function here, void fragment. And you'll notice we're using curly brackets here. Um, that's because this is not GD script. This is canvas. I've got issues here. There we go. This is not GDScript. This is their um, shader language. So it's not the same as using GDScript. It will be slightly different, but it's not too difficult to learn. So a fragment shader is, a, is basically a function that will run on each individual pixel of the shader. So um, first, what we'll want to do is get the original so we're going to make a color here. So vec4 color equals, and we can make a new color with a vector4. We'll just do 1.0, 1.0, 1.0, and 1.0, semicolon. That's our new color. And then we'll do color equals color. So all this shader does is it makes every single pixel this color, which happens to be white, right? Nothing too fancy. Well, we could technically export that color and allow us to modify the color over here. Uh, so let's do that. So we'll learn a little bit. They're called uniforms. Uniform, and we'll say vec4, and then um, hint color, I think equals vec4 and I think can we just do this let's try this real quick uniform vec4 color and then we can get rid of this down here uh, looks like we're going to need to pass in some arguments so 1.0 comma 1.0 comma 1.0 comma 1.0 so we'll just give it a default color of white there we go. Now if we come to our shader parameters over here, we can actually modify this color and see it update in real time. Uh, the shader will automatically apply this color to the color of each pixel in here. 
Okay, so that's how a uniform works, and that's how we're going to pass information into our shader. So the first uniform that we actually want to make will be a Boolean for whether or not we want to apply this shader. Like this. Then we'll want another one, which will be a float, which will be the amount that is applied. We'll start with 1.0 as a default. And the last one will be our texture. It's a sampler 2D. We'll call it offset texture. And its hint will be white. And we don't have to set it to anything. We can just leave it like that. Now you can see we've got apply, amount, color, offset texture. We're going to remove color. We don't actually need that. But we're going to need to recreate it back down here again. That four. Okay, and one of the things I really like about using shaders in Godot is that it does update in real time. We can see as long as we don't have an error, it's going to update and draw, apply our shader. Now that we've done that, we need to get the color from our texture. And this is actually um, not from the offset texture, this is the color from our actual texture the icon texture up here. This is equal to texture, texture, and UV. So this function right here takes a texture, so our icon for example, and a UV, which is basically, um, if, if we're oversimplifying this, it's basically an X and Y position on our pixel. It's a certain position on our texture. So it takes it takes the texture and it takes a position and then it returns whatever color is on that pixel. And obviously this runs on every single pixel so that so we're going to get every single picture. Imagine it looping through every single picture every single pixel on our texture and returning that value right here. And we'll just set our color equal to our texture color now. Texture color because we may not want to adapt, we may not want to change that. So now you can see um, the minute we set, set color equal to texture color, it's just drawing our texture normally. Well, that's because we're getting every single pixel, we're getting its color, and then we're setting each pixel again back to the same color that it was in the first place, which isn't very useful. But it allows us to do our if apply equals true. We can do a simple if statement. And some of you who are more experienced with shaders are going to um, have ways to optimize the shader. This shader isn't 100% optimized. There's probably ways to make it faster. But it's good enough in, in the form that it's at right now. Uh, so let's do, we're going to need to make a float. This is how much we're going to offset our texture. We'll start off with amount and we'll divide it by 100, like this. We won't use our offset texture yet. This will just be an amount that we want to offset. Then we'll say color.red. So this is the red value of whatever color we have equals texture, texture. And then we need to pass in a UV, right? But we're gonna get, we're gonna get the UV uh, next to us, like a position slightly next to us. So we're going to get the red value of the position next to us. So we'll say vec2 uv dot x plus adjustment or adjust adjusted amount. I actually want it to be called that uv dot y and then dot red at the very end because we're getting a color from this. We're getting the texture and we're getting a color. Once again, this is not super optimized. Adjusted amount. A adjusted amount. Why are we still getting errors here? Divide, di oh, it's because this is needs to be a float. So we've got to add a zero there. 
Okay, then we need to get our green value, which will stay the same. Color dot red equals texture texture effect or UV and then dot green and then color dot oops this should be color dot green right here green you can see we're already changing our our thing oh we're starting to get some of the shader there you can see the red values over here and the green that's left over we don't have the blue yet color dot blue equals texture it's actually going to be the same as this right here so we'll just paste this down here except we're going to subtract the adjusted amount and set our blue value Boom. Okay, so we've got our chromatic aberration working now. And if we click on this, we can adjust the amount. You can turn it off, right? Turn it on and off. Or you can adjust the amount, like five, that's going to be crazy, the amount that it's adjusting it. Um, okay, so now let's make it so that we can use a texture. And uh, the the benefit of using a texture is that you can have less of an offset in the center and more on the edges, which gives you kind of like a vignette effect, um, but with a blur, with a chromatic aberration. So in order to use the texture, all we have to do is get the white value of our texture and multiply it by our amount here. So we can just do multiply texture offset texture uv dot red well I guess I'm getting just the red value um, so technically it's getting whatever the red value is of the texture and not the white value but that works just fine too so then I'm going to come into I'm, I'm gonna actually grab that vignette and uh, drop it in my let me open up the project folder here, documents, Gitto 3, and chromatic aberration. Boop, drop it in here. Should appear down here now. So this is just a simple texture like this, right? Um, what, uh, darker values are going to be um, have less of an offset, and white values will have more of an offset. So let's come into here. Let's set our offset up way high. So we'll set it to five. You can see how much that offset is applied to the eyes and the nose. But if we decide to drag in an offset texture here, right here, boop, then we're getting um, much less, less offset right here on the nose and the eyes and more on the, but still quite a bit on the edges. And so if we lower this back down again, you can get a pretty good, a pretty good effect that keeps kind of the center of the image. Uh, it keeps the center of the image more normal. Let's actually re-import this with the 2D pixel. Whoops. See preset 2D pixel re-import. There we go. And so. Um, my, this is kind of a fuzzy image to start with when it's in even in pixel form, but you can see how the effect is a lot less dramatic here in the center than it is on the edges. And that can help because this effect can be really hard on your eyes. Um, so you want to be careful using this effect, but having a lower a lower amount in the center makes it a little bit less hard on your eyes because then it's only in the edges of the image where it starts to get strong. Anyways, here is the shader code. I'll probably post like a um, a link in the description that has this, this code so you can just copy and paste it over. But I thought I'd type it out and explain the basics of it to you uh, while we were typing. The gist of it is you offset the red and blue values on each pixel by a little bit in both directions. And so nothing too fancy about that. Um, but hopefully you learned something in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will talk to you all later.